prove things that we worry about in the world, the 15 challenges that Jerry just mentioned. How can you personally interact with that meeting in order to have an effect on those 15 challenges? Yeah, because just as I mentioned before about the invention of opera, it wasn't that they just invented the opera. The next step was to perform the opera. It's a two-step process. So how are we going to know who around the world wants to do what? Well, we asked them. So we'll, now it's a process of going through all that sort of stuff and sending back out emails. Do you want to do a augmented reality on health care, et cetera? And then sort of put it all together. So we'll see how that works. Yeah. And there are hundreds oh, sorry. of... So methodologically, it's a little bit interesting because before we're collecting information and judgments, now we're also collecting commitments. That's a little, that's an innovation. One of our nodes said, uh, we have, we've had enough of think tanks, we now have a do tank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they have a one floor think tank, the second floor uh, do tank. All right. That's South Korea, and they're, what they're doing is working with uh, algae in order to do uh, artificial fuels. Uh, an administrator in the real-time Delphi study can do the following. Choose and invite respondents. Provide the access code that allows these respondents and only those these respondents uh, to participate. Uh, they design the questionnaire. So uh, we, we've done so many of these studies because we can now appoint an administrator and say, here are the tools, do the design work, go invite the people, and, uh, and uh, analyze the data. Administrator chooses the questions, sets the closing date, prepares summaries of the data, and draws insight from the data. Here's the kind of insight that comes from the Egyptian study, still underway, but it's the three cross plots that I talked about before. We asked about government priority. In your view, does the government consider this development to be of high priority? Do, uh, do the people who went through the revolution considered this development to be of high priority, second question. And the third question we posed was, do you think this development will occur? So we could do cross plots that show popular support versus government priority. Notice those items that are getting popular support are not necessarily those that are supported by the government. Government priority versus likelihood, well that's pretty linear. Uh, but uh, popular support versus likelihood is even better those items which get popular support have high likelihood of being achieved. Okay. I am properly admonished. <laughs> State of the future. Yeah, State of the future index is a an index in the true sense of the word uh, that combines information about variables. Uh, in, in, in the way that any index comp compresses a number of variables into a single measure. Uh, that's good and bad because once we compress it into a single measure, we lose some kind of resolution, we, some kind of discrimination about what it is that makes the index go up or down. So when we build the index, we make it a point to never lose the data that went into the index. So for every wiggle in the index, uh, we can find the reason but in history or in the forecast. This index is unique in the sense that it gets at the outlook for the future. This is the state of the future index. And it answers the question, how would you know the future is getting better or worse? By combining, the answer to that is by combining the, uh, these variables. What variables? Well, variables of the sort that I show here. Literacy rate, water, poverty nuclear countries, a number of them, CO2 emissions, employment, armed conflict. We deal with approximately 30 variables when we build a state of the future index. It's not a trivial job because one must go back and get 20 years worth of data because we do 10 years of forecasting. And I feel very uncomfortable forecasting 10 years into the future with three years of historical data. So, so we're using a 20-year history, 10-year forecast as, as, as the balance here. So for all of those variables, and more that I didn't put on this chart, we get historical data and make forecasts. Notice that this is not a single value, but there's a fan of values in the forecast. That's because in addition to forecasting each of the variables, 
we ask what developments might occur that could influence any of the variables, that could swing them. What are the probabilities of those developments? And if they were to occur, what would their consequence be on those variables? That's probabilistic. Uh, it, it allows us not only to be probabilistic with respect to each of the variables, but as we combine those variables to make the, the index, it allows the index itself to be um, uh, to show a spread. And we can see that there is a spread between the upper and lower bounds. This is a 2011 run. I want to stay there. This is what Jerry was talking about because we can, we can um, look at where we're winning and where we're losing by reviewing those variables. This is where the data comes from to make those kind of statements, where we're winning and where we're losing. It's a dashboard. We will learn better how to present all of that information. And this year, we did something unique. Given the items that we looked at in the uh, trend impact analysis, that is, the, the developments and their impact on the variables, given those items, 92 of them, uh, we, we assigned a probability, you see here, uh, nominally, and then we had four variations on the theme. We had a recession scenario, a, a recession set of data, uh, bad weather, we call recession, bad weather, bellicose, a lot of war, greed, uh, a lot of favorable developments, and we manifested our judgments for those scenarios by changing the probabilities of the events that those scenarios contain. This is a way to make, to structure scenarios to provide a quantitative backbone to the scenarios so that when we say the bellicose world, we can show the state of the future index in that world. And somebody says, well, how do you come up with that? We say, well, we have these 92 events we considered, and the events varied in, in terms of, uh, that, that are easily seen across all of those worlds. Um, and I'm going to end on this slide because it is a, an important development. We've been working with the International Futures Modelers at the University of Denver, Barry Hughes and his group, a tremendously talented group. Uh, and the model is uh, a, an excellent model. It relates to it relates all of the 182 countries in the model to each other. It shows trade flows. It shows economic flows. It shows social change, demographic change. It's a fantastic model, really fantastic. And Jose, I think, initiated this a couple of years ago. Uh, in, intrigued them with the idea of including SOFI, State of the Future Index, in their model. We've, we've, we've had a number of individual countries building state of the future indexes for their countries. South Korea, for example, and, uh, and, uh, and Kuwait, for example, and others. But 183 countries, we wouldn't dare tackle that. That model now has the computational capability for SOFI, individual country by country. The historic data, unfortunately, the model is not up to the task yet. But as that data improves, the historical data improves, we can look ahead and see the possibility of publishing a document yearly, like the Human Development Index. But this is the State of the Future Index yearly, showing which countries improve their futures through various uh, mechanisms, uh, which countries have lost the game, and furthermore, we will be able, as I indicated before, uh, to find out why those things have happened. So we will be able to structure the countries of the world, list the countries of the world, in terms of their ability to improve their futures and what it was that let them, let them accomplish that. If things go well, and if we can get the historical data to justify that effort. And in this year's State of the Future report, we compare six countries, we show six countries and compare their state of the future indexes over time, as, uh, as is shown on this chart, as an indication of where we might go. Jerry. One little caveat, in addition to that, is there's three kinds of uh, SOFIs. One, the global one that we do. Comparison ones that Ted just talked about. Then there's also the state of the future index for a country that they design their own variables. That's the one for policy. 
Comparisons are interesting, but if you want to actually do future